Okay, welcome to the latest in distributed solar loan financing. Um, this is an offering from the Montana Renewable Energy Association, specifically catered to solar installers and um, employees, especially who work in sales and are working directly with clients when talking about the um, financial picture for individuals in Montana who are interested in going solar either for their home or business. Um, a little background about myself. Again, my name is McKenna Sellers. I'm the executive director for Montana Renewable Energy Association. I've been on staff since last fall and really happy to provide this webinar with our guest speakers, Miranda Bass from DEQ and Paul Herendine from Clearwater Credit Union. And I will leave their, their introductions to, to them. But um, as we get started here, and I think we've got the right size group, I would love to do a round of introductions if you're willing to unmute yourself, say who you are, where you're joining this webinar from, and um, which company, if, if you are in, associated with a solar company, which company you represent. Um, so let's start with our speakers first. If Miranda, you'd like to go, and then Paul. Sure. Good morning, everybody. Miranda Bass, and I am the program manager of the Alternative Energy Revolving Loan Program at the Montana Energy Office, which is located in the Department of Environmental Quality. Um, and I have been with the Energy Office. This is my seventh year um, and my third with the loan program. Excited to be here. Talk to you all about financing. Great. Thanks, Miranda. Uh, yeah, so I'm Paul Herendine, uh, Director of Impact Market Development at Clearwater Credit Union. Uh, I recognize uh, quite a few of you um, may or may not have met the rest, uh, but I work on our social impact programs here, including our work in climate change and renewable energy, and I've been uh, heavily involved in developing our loan program here. Thanks, Paul. All right, how about Melinda Fight? Would you like to go next? Sure. Um, I'm Melinda Fight. I'm with Remote Power Systems um, out of Stevensville, and I'm also here with my fellow co-workers, TJ Fight and Sandy McNamara. Thank you. Um, let's go Josh and then Alex Kolsch. So my name's Josh. I'm in Missoula. Um, I work with, um, well, I work for SBS Solar here, um, doing sales and design. Um, my name is Alex. I work at Harvest Solar. I've only been in the industry for about two weeks now, so everything is new, and I am learning everything. Thanks, Alex, and welcome. Um, let's go Forrest and then Jamie. Hey, Forrest Havens here with SBS Solar, same as Josh, uh, based out of Missoula. Um, yeah. Hi all, um, my name is Jamie Farrell. I work for Onsite Energy, where we're based out of Bozeman. Great, thank you. Okay, who am I missing? I don't think we've heard from Ryan or Austin. And if you're just joining, we're just doing introductions of who you are, where you're joining from, and then which company you're a part of. Hey, this is Ryan. I'm a project manager for Harvest Solar over in Billings, Montana. Thanks, Ryan. Welcome. Austin? Hey, Austin, you may not be connected to audio yet. At least we can't hear you. So I will let you go ahead and continue to work on that. And then um, Ben Brower, I think you're the last if you'd like to introduce yourself. Sure. Uh, ben Brower. I work at the Montana Energy Office with Miranda. Thanks for pulling this together. Excellent. Well, thank you, everybody. And I really hope that this is, um, I'd like to set up this presentation initially as informational. And then, as you might have seen on the second half of the agenda, um, I want to have a discussion and be a little more informal as a back and forth between the installers and those who work directly in sales is what you hear from customers and what your common practices are in terms of how you communicate about distributed solar loan financing. Because um, I think that will inform not only MREA, but I think it'll inform DEQ, it'll inform Clearwater, and it's just good for all of us to be in communication like that. Um, so as I said, Thank you again to our guest speakers, Miranda and Paul. We so appreciate you and all the good work that you do for Montana and for the renewable energy industry in our state. 
A little background about Montana Renewable Energy Association, if you're not familiar with us. I know we have a mix of members and potentially non-members um, joining us today, but the Montana Renewable Energy Association was founded in 2001 um, as a nonprofit member-based organization with the mission to foster the growth of renewable energy for all Montanans through industry engagement, through education, and through advocacy. So how that's played out over the course of the past few years, um, we've been very active at the Montana Public Service Commission when there were attempts to change um, the net metering rate class. We're very active on um, legislative and like policy making. That's why I'm in the Capitol today, um, tracking on bills and making sure that we're defending the renewable energy landscape of Montana and making sure that renewables have a fair shake. Um, that's not only good for the planet, but it's also good for customers and it's good for our um, businesses that I know you all represent also. Just as a quick overview of what MREA has planned for the rest of the year for 2023, of course, the legislative session takes up a big, um, the, a big chunk of our work. And as a board of, we have as far as the structure, we have the MREA board of directors. We have committees on fair and events, which work on education. We have our policy committee, and they're very active and involved in helping us draft our talking points and strategy around legislative session uh, bills that come up. Um, and then we also have, or used to have, an industry engagement committee. And before the pandemic, that committee was made up of um, solar installer employees, staff, and owners who were interested in um, coordinating on trainings, bringing in groups like SEI. Um, I think we had some like NABCEP training out there as well. But um, over the pandemic, that has just sort of like ebbed and flowed. And so it's one of my priorities to... Um, focus on like workforce development and training through the industry engagement committee. If that is of interest to anyone on this call, um, I'd be happy to have a conversation about it. And then um, talking about education, save the date for the 2023 Montana Clean Energy Fair we are hosting in Billings, Montana. Um, so for folks like Ryan over there in Harvest Solar in Billings, this might be right up your alley. Um, but the 2023 Clean Energy Fair and the Clean Energy Fair is something that MREA has held for 12 years and counting. We visit different um, communities across Montana. We have vendors, we have um, speaker sessions, we do an electric car show, we have kids activities, and it's a it's a really fun community event and also our, our big annual event for the year. So save the date for um, August 12th. And we'd really be happy to see you all join. And then another priority is, of ours is bolstering the membership. We know that um, we are stronger together. So if we have more participants in the fold, more people involved in Montana Renewable Energy Association, um, that correlates to the success. All right. So um, that gives you a little background. As far as the purpose of this meeting today, I wanted to make sure that um, installers and MREA members had the opportunity to get the most up-to-date information on solar loan financing. And I did make the distinction that um, when we're talking about residential systems, there isn't a whole lot of grant opportunities out there. Um, but there are opportunities in, in the loan financing like aspect of um, you know, how folks can get these systems online. So um, because of that, I've limited the scope to two of the more um, I guess like a common and awesome partners that MREA has had through um, Clearwater Credit Union and then also DEQ's revolving loan program so that installers have the most up-to-date information for 2023. Um, so we'll go, we'll start with uh, DEQ first, then we'll move on to Paul at Clearwater. And at the end, I wanted to offer kind of an open mic to answer the question from attendees, you know, what type of financing options work best for your customers? Where are there um, gaps in the way that customers understand some of these programs, where gaps may be in your knowledge too, I wanna to make sure that we are a resource and we're bringing the technical experts together to have this conversation. Um, and then I did put other loan financing tools that we're not covering today on the agenda. We wanted to talk about CPACE if that's of relevance. Um, and I think we could get to some of those as time permits, but they're technically not on the agenda. So that's what we have going forward. And I will pass the mic to Miranda if you're ready to give your presentation on the Alternative Energy Loan Program. Thanks. Yes, absolutely. Thanks, McKenna. I'll just give me one second. I'm going to fire up my screen sharing here. Get into present mode. Awesome. There we go. Okay. So um, 
I'm gonna talk about the loan program today, which I know some of you are already familiar with, since I've worked with a handful of you before, um, but I'm just gonna go over today, um, just a brief overview of the loan program, the terms, the process, um, take a look at our FY22 projects, as well as some program updates that we are working on currently, and then also some just helpful tips on the loan application. So jumping right in, these are the eligible technologies that we are able to finance. Um, they include uh, solar PV, which most of you are installing. And then we also um, finance solar heating, geothermal, uh, pellet and wood stoves, wind turbines, and micro hydro. Uh, by far our most common one is the residential solar PV. Another piece that would may also be helpful with you as you're speaking to clients. If you do have people who are looking for more um, energy efficiency upgrades, which you might not be able to provide, but it is a nice thing to note that we do offer financing for energy conservation measures if they are done in conjunction with one of the eligible technologies. So unfortunately they cannot be done as standalone projects, um, but they can be done when done in conjunction with um, the solar PV, for example. So if they were wanting to do insulation or updated windows or um, mini splits, those are eligible for this program. So these are just some of the basic terms of our loan program. Um, there is no application fee or down payment. The interest rate for 2023, we set it at the beginning of every calendar year. Um, this calendar year for the whole year, it will be at 3.5%. And that is fixed for the term of the loan. The maximum loan amount that any one person can borrow is $40,000. And then the maximum loan term is 10 years, uh, but there is no early payment penalty. So if somebody chooses to um, pay it off early, that is fine, they can do that. And then on the closing costs, we do have some closing costs associated with our loan program. There is an origination fee of 2% of the loan amount or $250, whichever is greater. And then the um, other fees include a recording fee, a filing fee and a flood fee of approximately $125. And those fees are coming from our um, financial services contractor. Uh, we work with the Montana Business Assistance Connection or MBAC for short. Um, and they are the ones that do all of the underwriting and servicing for our loans. Um, and so those are some of the fees that they charge for setting up each of these loans. So to give you an idea of what an average um, loan that we see come through our, our program, it's about $25,000. And I just wanted to go over the fees and how they impact the annual percentage rate or the APR. So our interest rate is 3.5%, but the APR is gonna vary depending on the loan amount. And that's because the loan amount um, is affected by the, um, excuse me, the origination fee is affected by how much a borrower is requesting. So because of that, that changes the APR. So this just gives you a snapshot of what the APR would look like on a $25,000 loan. So we have our 2% origination fee, which would be $500, our recording filing and flood fee of 125. So the total amount financed is 25,625. 25, and that puts us at an APR of 4.0, 0.023%. So there are a handful of APR calculators, and this is just an example, um, but there's a handful of APR calculators out there where you can plug in the parameters and it'll give you a, a nice little number here. Um, and then this would equate to a monthly payment of about $254. So some people choose to finance those fees. Most people do. Um, then they just get rolled into the loan. Um, other people want to pay those up front so they're not included in their loan. And there's options to do that as well. So getting into the loan process a little bit. So our application process currently can take four to six weeks to fully complete. And that's from application submittal until funds are in the borrower's account. Typically we can turn around a loan commitment statement um, within a week or so. And that is basically the point where the technical and environmental review is done. The financial review is done. It's essentially, you've been approved. We just have some final paperwork to do. Um, and so normally folks will know within the first couple of weeks if they've been approved for their loan or not. So we do have um, electronic applications 
Um, they are fillable PDFs, which are on our website. They can be mailed in. If people want to mail them in, that's totally fine. Um, we don't accept them via email, but we do accept them via, via the Montana File Transfer Service. It's a pretty easy service to sign up for, and people can upload their application and their supporting documents. Once I receive all of those documents, I do the technical and environmental review. So I am looking to make sure that all of the um, the projects are passing our technical and environmental requirements that are written in statute. And this is the phase where I'm reaching out to you guys, so the installers directly, or I'm reaching out to the applicant, depending on the kind of questions I have to, to get, gather any missing information. And then it goes over to the financial review, like I mentioned, uh, Montana Business Assistance Connection. Uh, they are looking at credit scores, debt to income ratio, um, repayment history to make a determination on if they are going to approve or deny the application. So assuming that everything looks good and they get approved, um, that loan commitment statement gets sent out for signature. Then the final loan documents are sent out. And these are, this is sort of where it takes the most time, these final loan documents. Um, it, they are sent via mail and then they have to be signed and notarized and then sent back to us. Um, and so depending on the borrower, this could take, um, if they're not in a huge hurry, it could take four weeks. If they're in a really big hurry, it could take a week. Um, we've had people before who they come and they get their stuff signed and they bring it to Helena and submit it in person. Um, so it kind of depends on how motivated the borrower is at that point. And then after we have all of those final loan documents, um, MBAC says, hey, we're ready for you to transfer funds to us. We release those funds to MBAC and MBAC releases them to the borrower. And then after that, once the project is completed, we do have a few project verification requirements. Um, we require photographs of the installation, so of the, of the panels and of the inverter, um, and then also copies of the approved permit, so the electrical permit, um, and then the final thing, a signed interconnection agreement, if applicable, assuming they're doing grid tied PV. Um, and we might also conduct a site visit. We do about five of those every year. So like I mentioned, the bulk of the time is coming from um, those final loan documents. And so what I wanna go over right now is the program updates that we are working on. So these are not finalized yet, unfortunately. Um, they are not set in stone, but I'm hoping that I will be able to, to get them done, but they are not currently finished. So right now, all of our loans are secured with the property where the project is located and with the UCC lien on the equipment. So this loan security is um, part of the reason why it takes so long. There's a lot of paperwork involved with that, a lot of signatures involved with that. Um, and then the, let's see. So we have those and then also the electronic signatures as well on final loan documents. They're all right now wet signatures. So we are hoping that we can um, offer two pods of borrowers. This is the idea that for qualified borrowers, so these would be folks with high credit scores, low debt to income ratios, great history of repayments. They would be would not have to have the requirement of a lien on their property. So that would be removed. And the only thing that would be securing those loans would be the equipment. For our less qualified borrowers, the same security would remain in place. And we wanted to do that to make sure that we can still offer to those less qualified borrowers, um, but include that security. So we we'll sort of have two different pods. Um, when we looked back at our projects from last year, 75% of our borrowers would be sort of in this, um, you know, less secure category. So only with the equipment. So that will allow us to have less paperwork, which will be, which will allow us to um, increase the loan processing speed. And then the electronic signatures, I'm hoping we'll be able to move to DocuSign. So then once applicants get the documents electronically, they can sign them, then they can send them back to and back, and then that will that could be done in you know a day as opposed to a few weeks. So that's the other big update that we're working on as well. Just a snapshot of our projects from last year. Um, so this is fiscal year 22. Uh, we had 39 loans. This one was a bit smaller, $957,000 in loans. Normally we're at about a million dollars in loans. That's pretty typical of what we see. The average loan amount from last year is 24,556. So that 
the example that I showed of the $25,000 is pretty typical of a loan that we see. Um, from this pie chart, you can see by far the largest is the grid tied solar PV. We had one heat pump, and then we also had a handful of grid tied PV plus batteries. We're seeing more and more of that as well. Um, so last year was, was a little bit smaller than what we typically see, but this year in FY23, it's shaping up to be one of our um, largest years yet. Uh, currently, we have financed uh, $1.2 million so far, and we have um, five months to go in this fiscal year. So this year is, is looking pretty good. The last thing is just some helpful tips for you guys. Um, I, of the bulk of these applications and of the um, checklist on the documents, uh, it's all on the borrower to gather all of these materials. But one of the things that I would say is if you're helping folks with this, um, just to be familiar with the application, take a look at it, read through it, um, and then also be familiar with the checklist of required documents. There are some cases where the installer is going to be the, the person providing that information. Um, and part of the application is this section 5B that I have screenshotted here. And this is the, the system information. So it has you know, the generating capacity, the projected um, energy production, the current annual usage, what the savings are gonna be, and then all of these other questions on here. And Sometimes people are well versed and they know what what these numbers mean and they plug them in and it's not a big deal. Um, a lot of times people don't know what I'm asking for here. They don't understand the difference between the capacity versus the production. Um, so helping folks out with this piece of the application, I think is huge. Um, and then also being familiar with the checklist um, that would include the project proposal, um, which includes uh, the list of components and the cost. If you can include model numbers, that's really helpful for me, um, as well as an energy analysis. Um, some people use PV watts, some people have their own energy analysis that they do, a production report. Uh, so just looking at you know, what they're currently using versus their production, um, a site map, that's one of the things on the checklist as well. And most of the proposals that I see already come with all of these things um, included already. And then the last thing are the product brochures. So for all of the major pieces of equipment, so that would be um, the batteries, if they have them, panels, inverter, the racking and rails are something that I look at as well to make sure that they meet the electrical code safety requirements. Um, so just being familiar with that checklist and those required documents is hugely helpful. Um, if I have all of the information, the, when I first get the application, I can complete my review for a simple project, um, you know, in a day. But if I have to do a lot of back and forth with the applicant or the installer, that can, of course, add, um, add some time to those reviews. So just being familiar with that is, is extremely helpful. I think most folks know um, who I am and, and my email and my phone number, but here it is for you again. And then our website as well. Um, there are links to the application, to the checklist. There's a link to the FY22 outcomes report as well. Um, and then eventually we do have a brochure for our, um, with our new interest rate on it. They are at the printers. So hopefully I will be seeing those soon. Um, but if you would like some copies and you wanna just include it in the chat, um, how many you'd like, I can get those sent out to you. You can send me an email as well. And then eventually I will also have a link to um, the electronic version as well. Thanks everybody, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Excellent. Thank you, Miranda. Thanks for that really helpful information. And um, I also really appreciate that you aggregated like the pro tips at the very end of what would be most helpful from an installer or from the, the company's point of view, how to help you um, in terms of streamlining the process of those applications. So um, we're at the time, I think that we're in a position to ask questions um, section by section. So if anyone has questions for Miranda and the revolving loan fund, um, I know that she did an awesome job talking about turnaround times and expectations, but if anyone has specific questions to direct at Miranda, I think we've got time for them. I had one, uh, Forrest Davis here with SPS Solar out of Missoula. Nice to see you again, Miranda. Um, I was curious because you said really quickly that you sometimes do site visits. What determines if you do a site visit for a, a job? Yeah, so there's nothing really that um, 
that I look for in particular, generally, I try to do a variety of different projects. Um, so I, I'll try to do, because a lot of them, as you can see, are just grid tied PV. Um, so if I have a, a variety, like if I have a business who did a larger system, or if I have an off grid system with batteries or a grid tied system with batteries, I try to hit uh, some variety in there as well. And then the other thing that I look forward to is if it's just an interesting project or if they've done um, you know, other energy efficiency items with their project as well. I might want to see that. Um, and that's really just more for me, for my education, so I can see um, see the installation and talk to the homeowner and just see how their, their system is working for them. So there's really no, you know, one thing. Um, it's mostly just trying to get a variety of different types of systems. And then if there's anything interesting out there that I want to go look at. Any other questions for Miranda? We've got one from Melinda here. Yes, the slides will be available for, um, I'll distribute them via email. These slides specifically are not on the DEQ website, but I can share those after the presentation. And then um, talking about yearly deadlines, can you speak to that, Miranda? Yeah, so um, we accept applications on a rolling basis. Uh, so there are no deadlines. You can submit at any time. The only time, or there might be some kind of deadline is if we are in ranking uh, criteria. So that would be if the uh, cash balances are super low and we have to rank our applications, um, which we have only had to do one time in recent his recent memory, um, but that we are not in in that arena at all right now. Uh, we our cash flows are looking good, so with no deadlines right now, nothing like that. Great. Any other questions for Miranda before we move to uh, Clearwater's solar loan option? Okay. Paul, the floor is yours. Great. Thanks, McKenna. And uh, thanks, Miranda. Um, yeah, that's the DEQ's loan program is great uh, and, and does terrific work. And uh, it's, a, it's a really good choice for consumers. So as we entered this field, uh, we had to get um, also fairly aggressive in our offering uh, to try and compete with what they're doing. We always say we have a friendly competition with the DEQ, 100% uh, support their work. Um, and, you know, we're, we're both here to do what's best for the industry and the consumer. So uh, in order to compete with the DEQ, we did put together uh, a solar loan package ourselves. And uh, currently ours is a unsecured loan. So it's basically just being given to the, the members, what we call them in a credit union, to the member themselves, uh, no security. It is, we also raised our interest rate. So it's currently 4.90% APR. There are no origination fees uh, with that at all. So the interest rate is the APR. People can pay that down over whatever schedule they like. They can always make prepayments. Um, they can, if they'd like to, they can what they call recast the loan. So they can make a big payment, keep the term the same and lower the, the uh, monthly payment, or they can just make early payments and the thing will just clear a little bit early. The current loan limit is $75,000 and we can go up to about a hundred with a little bit of extra underwriting on that. And in terms of what it covers, uh, this is something that actually that we are in the midst of reworking right now. So I'm very interested in feedback from this group. But currently, it's for solar PV. If a solar thermal system came up, we'd certainly be happy to take a look at it. Uh, we just haven't seen any. It will also cover associated roof work. So if somebody wants to re-roof before they put on the panels, they can roll that into this loan. And currently, it also covers heat pumps. So if they want to go ahead and add on to that, they can. Like I said, we're in the midst of reworking this at the moment. I'm actually going straight from this meeting to one with the loan team to talk about what else might be included in this loan. And that's something we'd love to hear from, from installers if there are things that commonly go in at the same time. Of course, we'd be willing to consider battery systems, uh, but we're wondering if people often want to roll in something like 
uh, an EV charging station, you know, or again, the heat pumps, you know, if they wanted to like electrify their build, building systems. So if there's anything else that would be useful to include in that loan, we'd love to hear about it. A smart load center. Uh, to be honest, I'm not familiar with that technology. Is that something that just kind of helps manage the, the overall system? Is that for a, a DC uh, generator? That's a good question too. Uh, happy to maybe follow up with this. Um, happy to consider it. You know, the goal here with the loan is to make it work, right? To uh, solve the needs of the members, to help you all get more projects done. So um, we're, we're more than happy to entertain all of those. And likewise, as I talk about the process, if there's ever anything we can do in the process to make it work better for your customers, for you, we'd love to hear about that as well. So because it's an unsecured loan, we can turn them around really fast. Uh, we, as I'll show you in a second, we have an online application form for certain highly qualified borrowers. They can actually get automated underwriting. They'll get a response almost instantly. Um, if it takes a little more looking into, it'll get referred to one of our loan officers and they try to respond that day. Um, sometimes it might be the next day, but we can turn these pretty fast. Nobody will ever get denied automatically through that system. Uh, it'll either be an automatic approval or it'll get referred to a lender and they'll get a phone call. Having done this for a number of years, I will say that the credit profile of the borrowers has been excellent. Uh, we do with this loan, when we have a fixed pricing on it, so it's 4.9% for everybody who qualifies. And the way we underwrite, though, is we're willing to go, you know, fair ways down the, the credit tiers. Um, but in practice, the people who apply um, tend to have excellent credit profiles. Uh, just recently, I tried to figure out how many solar installations actually get financed in the state. And I uh, want to say thanks to McKenna for some um some Northwestern Energy installation data on that. Uh, thanks to Miranda, we're always um, sharing information back and forth on our loans as they go. The nearest I could tell is that something between 10 and 20% of solar installations are getting financed um, in the state. I don't know if that matches what you're seeing in practice, um, all you installers, but that was kind of my, my best guess. Um, all right, I will do my best to answer these questions. Smart load centers, need to learn more about those. Uh, if, if they're help manage a solar system, probably. Generators, uh, you know, we've had that one come up before. We've decided for the moment not to include generators. Um, just felt a little bit far afield for what we were trying to do. That said, uh, if this is something that comes up a lot, it would, but you feel like we're made a misstep on that, we're happy to hear about it. Um, off grid, yes. So I realize that's kind of a funny line to split, right? If we're going to fund off grid systems but not generators. Um, so again, we can. Uh, we, we'd be happy to take a look at that. And I will say that based on a couple of years of experience here, uh, you know, the, much like the DEQ, the bulk of what we're seeing is grid tied PV systems, right? Real straightforward. And then the stuff that always throws us for a curveball is being Montana, um, there's always an interesting project out there, right? So there's always somebody who's got an idea. And uh, we're happy to hear about those. A lot of those are going to be handled on a one off basis, like we can't even anticipate. Um, all the kind of strange situations that come up sometimes. So we're always happy to chat about them. All right, let me see if I can share my screen here and I'll show you this online application. So this is on our website, uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, let me know if you can't see that, but... Um, yeah, it's right there at the top, right? Apply for a home solar loan. And uh, folks start to go down that path. It'll take them to this page. And really, they just start in inputting um, inputting the, the numbers here. Uh, there's been some questions lately about how people can get on this list. Great question. This was kind of a trial program that we started a, a little while back. And um, as I have this meeting in about an hour, we're going to talk about uh, to opening that up, getting everybody on there. Um, I won't go through all the steps here because eventually you do have to put in things like a picture of a driver's license. Uh, this will involve a soft credit pull if they go all the way to the end. Um, but it is one of the easiest ways to apply for this loan. And again, we can turn these around very fast. Uh, of course, any of our loan officers at the bank can handle this. 
So you can walk into a branch, you can call the main line, you'll get directed to somebody who can do it. Um, uh, but this is probably the easiest way. And uh, certainly for all you installers, um, I'm a great point of contact here. I'll put my contact info up at the end. And uh, I can also put you in touch with the um, people who run the loan team. I'm not a lender, but I can put you in touch with them uh, to help troubleshoot uh, in case any issues come up. Because if somebody does get a loan on this, uh, in terms of documentation, we don't need a lot from the installers or from the member. We don't do technical review. Uh, we don't you know, do any sort of suitability review, anything like that. Basically, what we're the thing we're checking for is, is this a real project? Um, is this actually happening? The interest rate is, is better than you would get for other kinds of home loans for the most part. So uh, we just want to be sure this is getting used for solar. Um, with that in hand, then we underwrite based on the member's income, go ahead and fund the loan. And then we do a 70-30 disbursement. We disperse 70% of the loan right away. We can transfer that over by wire to the installer. Um, so you can go ahead and purchase materials, get started on that. Uh, and then we hold the last 30% until it gets released by the member, um, just when the project is completed. The uh, So far, that's worked really well. Um, we don't have a very formal system around you know, what it takes to get that release. We don't do site visits. Uh, because this is such a small community in Montana and the quality of the installers is so high, well, we've never had a problem doing it this way. So that's basically where we're at with this one. Uh, I know that it might be a surprise that the interest rate went up. Um, I just found out about that myself, actually. That was done by our asset committee here. So as we move ahead, rework this loan, again, please, if there's things that you'd like to see covered, things you'd like to see changed, do let me know. And when we get that done, we will get a communication out uh, to everybody who's interested and try to be very clear about the loan, what it covers, how to apply, uh, because I think that's part of, of what um, makes it successful is if it's easy to communicate about. So that's it in a nutshell. Uh, are there any questions I can answer? Well, this is a common one, but do customers of solar installers have to be current members or do they have to already be banking with Clearwater Credit Union to be eligible for the home solar loan? Oh, thank you. That's a great question. I'm glad you asked that. Uh, and the answer will be a little circuitous, but hopefully this makes sense. So as a credit union, uh, we serve members, we members because they are owners of the credit union, we're a nonprofit cooperative um, that share a common bond, what is what they call it. And so that can be anything, right? Like you, there's Navy Federal. So anybody who's associated with the Navy nationwide can be a member of Navy Federal. Oftentimes there's like teachers credit unions. Um, over the years, as we've grown, we've absorbed uh, the Rail Workers Union and the uh, University of Montana Credit Union. So at this point, our common bond is geographic. So we serve the 20 westernmost counties of Montana. Anybody who lives, works, worships, or attends school in that area, just easy in, slam dunk. Um, so that covers about two thirds of the population of the state and uh, gets us to basically to Bozeman um, and then from there west. Now, people beyond that who belong to a membership based organization headquartered in that service area can also qualify. Uh, there are a ton of organizations like that. A natural fit, of course, is the MREA itself. So anybody that nationwide, honestly, who's an MREA member. Um, we can qualify for a loan. That said, I want to be clear, we don't lend outside of the state as a matter of policy currently. But um, anywhere in the state, if they're a member of the MREA, that's great. Uh, that's always the first one I mention. Membership is not a lot. They do terrific work. Um, that said, on our side, we do need to be careful that we don't say, yes, you have to be a member of the MREA to qualify for membership or really, any of these organizations. Uh, and there are hundreds, frankly, all these nonprofits. Um, but the MREA is a big one. Uh, Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, very common. And uh, we can almost always find something. So the lenders who handle this loan, once an application goes in, are totally familiar with this. Um, they do it all the time. So uh, short answer, we can almost certainly lend to anybody uh, in the state. The other thing I'll say, too, uh, is that I've just been talking about our residential solar loans here. We're more than happy to land on any kind of renewable energy at any scale. 
Um, so we'll certainly do commercial solar loans for people putting them on their businesses. Um, in that case, we don't have a, the same kind of fixed package here. Uh, the, those get underwritten in a different way and the commercial team um, looks at them a little differently. So the best way to get one of those rolling is to just start a conversation with our commercial lending team and I can help um, facilitate that. If there were an opportunity to get involved in larger scale projects, community solar, utility scale, uh, we'd love to do it. You know, it's, at least is what I've seen, there hasn't been a ton of large scale renewable energy development in Montana. And the few projects that have gone in in the last couple of years have come in with their own financing. Uh, there's certainly plenty of national financing looking for those kind of projects. But, you know, if there's an opportunity, we'd love to get involved. Any other questions I can answer? Yeah, this has been, um, thanks for your updates, Paul. I'm just curious how much you're you're seeing or how much interest you're seeing in the commercial side. And I guess more specifically, whether you're you're making commercial loans through the CPAY structure or whether you're just doing that through your, your conventional business lending. Yeah, um, yeah, great questions. To be honest, we're seeing very little uh, commercial solar lending. I think we've done one. Uh, I think there's a couple things going on there. Um, one, looking at the uh, Northwestern Energy data, um, there just aren't a lot of commercial installations going on. I want to say that at least on the Northwestern side, they're doing like 20 a year. So those mm -hmm. are already pretty low. Uh, my suspicion is the way business lending works, people tend to have relationships with their financial institution and with their individual lenders. So I think people who are financing those are probably just going to whoever they're already getting financed by. Um, but we'd love we'd love to do more, you know. And if there's if there's something that we can do to help serve the need, uh, great. We'd we'd love to do it. But we, we aren't currently. Um, regarding CPACE, yeah, we've put um, a fair bit of time into getting up to speed on CPACE. Uh, the commercial team has gotten really comfortable with them. Um, they've come around to actually kind of loving the idea, which you know really that level of security really warms the banker's heart. Um, that said, uh, we haven't. I don't know if we've done one yet. Um, we have a couple of challenges there. One, which is totally inside baseball, is the way that our regulators, the NCUA, the way banks are regulated by the FDIC, uh, currently prohibits us from doing commercial loans past a 15-year term. Hmm. Uh, I'd love to see that changed. There are some trade groups working on that. That really goes against the goals uh, of a lot of industry groups to do more clean energy lending. Um, but that puts us at a disadvantage for CPACE financing because one of the great things about that is you can push that term so long that the, the monthly service gets really low. Uh, and it also appears to me, although the MFFA would have more to say about this, that for the, the really big projects, there is outside money coming in at this point. There are national CPACE financing firms uh, that pay attention. They saw that Montana opened this up and the first project, which I think was a, something like a $20 million project, um, attracted outside financing. The trick going forward for CPACE, in my mind, is, is it going to work for these smaller scale projects, right? It makes a lot of sense if you're doing a $10 million CPACE, you know, financing injection. That, that's a slam dunk. But can you do it on $150,000 worth of uh, solar on a business? Um, or are the overhead costs too high? And I think that remains to be seen. Great. Thanks. And I'd say that, you know, as Miranda noted, we, you know, we, we do see quite a few applications that, um, that are including uh, heat pumps, um, although we're not financing a ton of them, we just see a lot of notes from applicants saying that they're, you know, they're oversizing their system because they're planning on installing an electric vehicle charger and they're planning on installing heat pumps. Um, so that we've really seen an uptick in, in, in that side of things, even though we're not financing a lot of that equipment yet, are you seeing the same level of, of demand on your end? I don't think we've, we've, um, we've done a lot of that yet. You know, people ask questions yeah. about, um, batteries and things like that. We may, maybe have done one or two, but not a lot. Yeah. I would say. Okay. And I think our average loan size is, uh, somewhat smaller than yours. I want to say more like $15,000. And so I don't think we've seen people upsizing systems too much yet. Okay, great. Thanks for sharing. Sure. To go along those, oh, sorry. Could I ask a question, McKenna? Yeah, jump in, Horace. Uh, to go along those lines of like the appliances and stuff like that, um, 
I know Miranda mentioned it that they would do uh, mini splits and, and uh, new windows for energy conservation and stuff. Um, Clearwater Credit Union, do you guys do some of those things as well? Because I know a lot of people want to switch over to electric if they're going to get an electric producing unit, you know, so they want to switch over their stove to electric, heating, water, uh, water pumps, all that type of stuff. And I was curious, do you guys would you throw that in the one loan as well? Because that would be a big, I guess, selling point. Um, and also to keep in mind with this, other things that would go with like the solar system, system like heat tape, um, EV charging, that's a big one. Um, and of course, like electrical needs, like to meet the NEC code, um, like meter upgrades, service upgrades, all that stuff. Um, I'm curious what, can get thrown in with the loan. And I guess that would be a question for both Paul and Miranda. Like what can we put into the loan all in one? Cause that'd be, that'd be big. Sure, Miranda, you wanna go first? Sure, yeah. So um, with the energy conservation measures, there's, we kind of, we look at them certainly on a case by case basis. Um, in the past we have financed um, appliances, things like that. Um, on the upgrading of the electrical, um, and Ben can jump in if I'm if I'm wrong here. But as long as it is necessary for the project, um, then we can include that. Um, really, the the big no nos for ours is anything that has um, fossil generation. So we can't do um, a generator. We can't do. Um, you know, like a, a new furnace that's natural gas, for example. Um, but a lot of a lot of the things for the energy conservation measures, um, we we can include. We cannot do roofs, so that's a cool thing that Clearwater does. We do not finance any roof repairs. We can do batteries. Thanks. Yeah, on our side, uh, two answers to that. Currently, uh, it's it's basically, yeah, PVs, roof, and heat pumps. And heat pumps uh, would include mini splits. Uh, we, you know, we haven't had anybody come up with needed electrical work yet. That's a great question, uh, and we'd be happy to consider that. And that brings me to kind of the second part of my, my answer, which I'm afraid won't be quite satisfying yet, the way the timing worked out. But like I said, we're in the midst of uh, taking a look at this loan, seeing how we can do more. Currently, we have two two loans. We have a, we have this home solar loan. Um, which is as I described, and then we have a home efficiency loan, uh, which covers a wide range of efficiency measures, uh, but has a higher interest rate. I think it's about 7.9% now. Uh, to be honest, we've done all very little with that loan. I wouldn't say it's been successful. Um, it was intended to cover things like insulation, weather stripping, uh, more efficient um, HVAC systems, uh, things like that. And uh, conversation I'll be having with the lenders shortly is do we want to combine these, come up with just one, you know, call it green energy loan? Um, because to my mind, at least, part of what makes this work for your customers, our members, is just making things really clear, right? You don't want to have a bunch of different programs with a bunch of different qualifications and a bunch of different interest rates. Um, so we'll be updating that shortly, uh, and I'll um, have to communicate with you. I'm sorry, I can't give you a better answer than that right now. Well, that's exciting that you're headed to that conversation right after this one, Paul. So we'll yes. we'll certainly be interested in what comes out of it. Any other <laughs> questions for our presenters? Yeah, this is Josh, SBS Solar. I had kind of a piggyback question on the electrical stuff. So we, um, Forrest can probably attest to this, probably like 30% of our jobs require meter main upgrades. Um, and I think a lot of times you're not seeing that because the homes just aren't going to you for that loan. You know, it's anywhere from $1,500 to $3,000 to an electrician to come do those upgrades. Um, and so I think the reason you guys aren't seeing it is just because you're not taking it there. But if it's something that you guys do end up including in it, I feel like it would be a pretty common thing to add in just because it's a lot of these systems are getting bigger. Um, the NEC code changed quite a bit. And so we're trying to navigate that and figure out what these meter mains need to have, you know, a two inverter system or maximum maximizing all that. So um, yeah, just... great. That, that's a good point. Um, typically, do, does the electrician get subcontracted by you or do they contract directly with the homeowner? 
it's a mixture i would say um a lot of homes end up just going with the electrician that they have for their house they've used forever um mm -hmm. and so yeah then it's a separate bill kind of separate um separate system but then we um have two electricians we use if a home wants to use them that we subcontract through so uh yeah great thanks i appreciate that all we'll definitely consider that yep and sorry one more thing to piggyback on top of that piggyback uh so they have on this when they do solar systems they have to have a um, inspector come out and check out like the whole thing um city state inspectors um and so you have to you see a lot of other things that aren't even in pertaining to like the solar system mm -hmm. that they need to change up like for instance there was a um a water softener that was within three feet of the of a home's main breaker panel and that's against the code and so they need to have a plumber come out and like change that stuff so what i would recommend if you guys could add on in your loans like if there's anything else that needs to be taken care of to supplement for the um the inspector that would be that'd be a big um i guess selling point for you guys but yeah something to think about yeah that's great uh good to hear i hadn't heard that before so yeah we'll definitely talk about that I mean, I'll, I'll say, you know what, I'm going to pitch here. We'll see what happens. But given my druthers, I, I, I want one loan, one interest rate that just like clean energy. Like that's it. Um, and, you know, whatever it takes to make that happen. But we'll see. Yeah, all good questions. And thank you, everybody. These are, this is a really good discussion. And I'm, I'm certainly learning about what's happening on the ground too. So I hope this has been helpful for our speakers as well as our participants. So I'm gonna end the recording here and then we'll move on to the discussion portion. Um, I have this scheduled out till 10.15 and if you need to hop off, that's totally fine.